Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about Unchained. Now Unchained, as you saw in one of my recent videos about Blue Eyes, is one of those decks I've been looking to build but sort of putting off. I saw a really a opponent playing a really cool Live Twins Unchained deck. I decided to sort of test it out. Didn't love it too much to be honest, but I did love the Unchained package, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. I picked this deck up, had to do some tweaks, you know, did some working on it, taking cards in and out. As soon as I landed on this version of it, immediately went on a five win streak in Diamond, and it just performed so consistently. The follow up is insane, your destruction is insane, your floating is insane, your, your board wipes, your floodgates, just incredible overall. Honestly, the deck has so much versatility to it. It's very difficult for your opponents to know actively what they need to do to stop you, because one, the deck isn't very common. So people don't really know exactly how it works. So you can use that to your advantage. But two, it generally just, it doesn't stop. You know what I mean? It just constantly has something to do. It has, constantly has a play. You get a really sort of solid turn one when you're setting up one of your trap cards as well as your Unchained Soul of Rage. We're going to take it card by card at the end of the video. So stick around for that and watch the gameplay. We've got four duels and this is four of the first five games. One of the one of the first five was just like, like an instant scoop, otherwise I would have shown all five. Uh, I'm going to show four of the first five so you can sort of see what the deck was as we were learning the play. But even as we were learning the play, we were crushing Branded, we were crushing Sword Soul. Sword Soul in particular, a lot of Sword Soul we went against and we just annihilated them every time. Uh, but yes, uh, we're going to get into the deck profile going to come at the end. We're going to get into the gameplay. If you like what you're seeing and you want to see anything more, any suggestions, anything like that, feel free to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed the content. And leave down below what you think of Unchained. Is it a deck you've ever played before? Uh, is there any changes to what you would do? I wish there was a few more versatile themed type link monsters. Uh, you can mix in some like synchro nonsense and stuff into it, but like it just it it corrupts the deck, it dilutes the deck and what it really wants to be doing. I do wish there was a few more fiend monsters because you tend to get locked into your fiends an awful lot from like your Rakia and your that. I don't know how to say that without sounding racist. Uh but yeah. Still tons of options. See to be honest, the entire extra deck, we didn't even really use it. We used literally that this is the only monster we summoned the whole time the rest of the time we were just winning with our trap cards it was it was crazy but yes deck proof at the end gameplay coming up stay tuned let's get in again number one already getting into game one here we're going second uh which isn't a good look for a deck that you know primarily plays trap cards and it looks like we're going up against Sword Soul Tengi, a really powerful opponent here. So we're, we've got our we've got our work cut out for us. Now, if anyone who doesn't know, uh, while our opponent's going to take their time uh, making their plays, the Unchained Monsters and the Unchained Deck type basically works around destruction. So uh, these are your two, two main twins. You like seeing these guys. Basically, this one allows it special summon itself to the field by destroying a card on your field. And this one has quick effect to pop a card in your field. And my why is that good? All of the live twins, whenever they're unchained twins, sorry, whenever they're destroyed, will summon another from the deck. And the trap cards did the same thing. If they're destroyed, you summon one from deck as well. So we're going to draw off our turn here. We're getting through a sovereign and a grand master. Now, of course, the sovereign's a bit of an issue because it banishes when we summon. We're going to pop the abominable chamber of the unchained. This is basically a monster reborn. But like I said, all the trap cards, when destroyed, will summon an unchained from the deck. We've got our Arura on the field as well. So we summon the Abominable Soul on summon discard one to pop one. Our opponent's going to use this opportunity to go for their Sovereign as well as negating us to stop our uh, monster's destruction effect, which is fine. Honestly, that means that we're at least eating up both two of their interruptions, which is good for us. You know, we take the 1200 damage to the face. That's whatever. Normal summon out our Unchained Rakia. We're going to pop our own monster here to, we would have summoned out an unchained soul uh, from the deck which would have allowed us to link summon into our unchained soul of rage unfortunately our opponent's got the ash we're gonna set two and pass uh we're also gonna take out his monk as well just you know because why not now torrential tribute becomes a massively powerful card in this deck it is so ridiculously strong you're gonna see it here punico's moyi moyi summon token by revealing the taya that's our normal summon gone and then we just wipe the board completely take out everything yes we take a 1200 slap on the rest here from the sovereign uh we try to use our rakia to destroy the torrential tribute prior to its banishing to save ourselves some life points we might as well 
uh, but the Grandmaster is going to negate the Rakia as well. But again, we're just eating up another monster out of his graveyard, which is fine by us. Uh, he's going to tribute his Moe to add the Strategist to his hand, so now he's got the Strategist. Uh, we actually made a small uh, misplay, is that a mis I wouldn't say a misplay, a miscalculation we'll say. So in Trap Trick here, I activated Trap Trick because I thought I was playing Dimensional Barrier in this version of it, I wasn't playing it yet. Uh, so instead we play Escape of the Unchained, otherwise I would have played Dimensional Barrier and Declared Synchro. But Escape of the Unchained is really really powerful just as much because it allows us to pop an Unchained monster and one of their cards and we were going to summon one of our Unchained because our Rakia was destroyed by our own Torrential Tribute. So it's, it's like nothing ever happened to us. They discard the Taya, summon out their Strategist, we pop our Escape of the Unchained, pop up, they're destroyed and our uh, Sarama replaces itself with the Unchained Soul of Disaster. Now this is the main sort of Unchained Soul you want to be using. The other one pops a bunch of cards, which is cool, but this one allows you to Link Summon using one of your opponent's monsters. So we take his Strategist, we Link Summon into the Unchained Soul of Rage, we poke him for 18, and the Unchained Soul of Rage during our opponent's turn allows us to Link Summon in their main phase with one of their cards which is insane, it's like a Link version of Super Poly. Our opponent's seen enough, and they basically pass it up. It doesn't matter what they were going to summon, we were going to steal it off of the Unchained Soul. That's pretty much just it, what are you gonna do? But yeah, there you go, getting through the Sovereign, getting through the Grand Master, the Strategist, the Moe, follow-up, getting through all of that against one of the best decks in the game with relative ease like you know it wasn't it wasn't even difficult like we knew exactly what we were doing the whole time we were in control of that game as much as our opponent thought he was he was not there was no point in that game where we were even sweating fantastic sh sort of showcase there after this game we added the D barrier in uh because of this because i thought i was already playing it but i took it out for my testing but yes really good game number one let's get in the game too Alrighty, this one, as far as I can remember, is a little bit quicker. Uh, we're going to go for Abomination's Prism, which searches any of our Unchained cards. Summon out Rakia and set a face down to pop the face down off of our Rakia. Summon out a, a Sama, Sarama, <laughs> if I could speak. Sarama pops, so this is your main sort of turn one. Your One of your Unchained twins will pop a spell or trap card. It'll grab your Samsara, or Sarama. Sarama pops a twin to reset the trap card and then the twin that gets destroyed will summon out the unchained soul from the deck whichever one of them you want and then you link someone using these two into your unchained soul of rage so that's the main sort of combo for the deck that's your ideal turn one basically you want any of your two left twins the red or the blue one and you want one of your traps uh set the trap summon the monster pop up with the monster's effect whichever one you have uh, that will summon sarama sarama pop the monster to set the trap card and then the popped monster will summon the Unchained Soul. Unchained Soul and your Sarama link into Unchained Soul of Rage. So right now we have two interruptions essentially, plus we've got the two cards in hand. And uh, they're gonna go Branded opening here. We're gonna max C preemptively. We know our opponent's playing Branded, which is the best deck in the game. I don't feel like I should need to repeat that. But again, Branded, I don't know. I've Branded, I very rarely have problems with. I feel like once you know how to play around it, it's not that bad. Uh, we top deck in the Imperm, which isn't very useful for us just yet. Edge and Edge Imp and Chain is going to grab him, afraid for a patchwork from his deck. The Alibur is going to search a branded Speller Trap card as well. I would imagine branded in red, yes. Uh, so that's fine. Our opponent goes Polymerization here. This sort of throws off our play because we didn't get a chance to resolve our Unchained Soul of Rage. Our opponent's going to go into Masquerade. We were sort of holding off, seeing if we can get a really good target for it here. We're not too worried about Masquerade. If he went to go in the battle phase, we would, of course, use it then. Our opponent goes for the Branded Fusion. We're not going to allow that to go through. We're going to Ash Blossom the Branded Fusion, which suits us perfectly. Uh, so negate that, get that out of here. Freight for Patchwork comes on out, grabbing another Poly and another Edge Imp Chain. So, again, adding a material to our opponent's hand for another fusion summon. There's a second poly. Fuse three monsters together here to go into the Guardian Chimera. Now, that's what throws us off. We weren't too worried about Masquerade, so we didn't target it. But now we can't target Chimera because there's a poly in the graveyard. So now we can't use Orange and Soul of Rage. He's going to get to pop one of our cards. And he would have resummoned his Masquerade. We're going to go for Ghost Bell to try and negate that. Uh, but he's simply going to chain the effect of Masquerade itself. Maybe that wasn't the best use of Ghost Bell, but, you know, it is what it is. What are you going to do? 
so he summons out the masquerade once again now of course masquerade would have given us a target but we're already sort of in range of the chimera it's going to pop our ancient soul of rage which will then add back the abominable soul uh to our hand masquerade swings in the arm monster and this is when our opponent realizes it's over so <laughs> I know that seemed like a preemptive scoop from our opponent there, but we, what we were going to do is we pop the soul, the twin on the field, and his masquerade pop up. Then the abominable soul gets summoned out to the field because one of our cards were destroyed. And using it, I discard one to destroy a card in the field, non targeting, so his chimera gets destroyed as well, leaving us with a 3k beater on the field that basically every single turn, if it was sent to the graveyard that turn by being destroyed, gets to resummon itself. So we've got a recurring 3k beater going into our turn. Our opponent's branded uh, in red was already used. Their polys were already used. Uh, sorry, their branded fusion. Their branded red was the only card they really had left. So I don't... They could have played further through that, but I think they were just fed up of having to deal with all of the recursion and the effects. So again, clean win against uh, branded as well. Let's get into game number two. Already game three. We're going second again. Not ideal. You really want to be going first with this deck. Our opponent's going to go for Elemental Hero Shadow Mist. Summon and set two. So if your opponent has the absolute cojones to make a play like this, you know for a damn fact that at least one of these two face downs is mask change. Our opponent's not just gonna do this and then do nothing with it. They're gonna have a play. So we draw one, we draw into Trap Trick, which is a fantastic card in this deck, really. Abominable prison, our opponent. Abominations Prison, sorry. Our opponent preemptively goes for Mask Change. That's very, very detrimental for us because the Mask Hero Dark Law, you would think anyone who's been paying attention would know, right, that's a problem. All of our monster's effects activate when they're destroyed and sent to the graveyard. Dark Law states that any card that would be sent to our graveyard is now banished instead. Meaning our deck's, our, our deck's dead. We lose. Like, how are you, you going to play the game? Uh, Shadow Mist is going to search his deck for a card as Dark Law is going to snipe one from our hand. Uh, what's he going to snipe here? He snipes the Ghost Bell, which is a little unfortunate. I would have liked to have that. Uh, so what do we do against a card that outs our entire deck? We summon one in set three. What's he going to do about it? Moving in, draw phase right away. We're not giving them a second chance. We're just going to pop, pop, get rid of that Dark Law. We don't even want to look at it. Triggers our monster in the graveyard. He goes to hit us with that call by the grave. We can activate our other trap card, which is basically Monster Reborn for your Unchained. Gonna resurrect Rikia from the graveyard. That's when our opponent's gonna hit us with a maxi. Just fine, we don't really care. He's gonna draw, what, two, maybe three cards this turn. So there's the Rikia. Uh, and then, of course, off the Rakia's effect, we get to summon out the uh, Ahura, or whatever its name is. Trap Trick, Banish Torrential Tribute, Set Torrential Tribute, and that is just menacing. You know your opponent has Torrential Tribute set, and he's playing heroes, none of his cards, unless he's going into, like, Malicious being Resist Destruction. Uh, so that's just intimidating as hell. I think our opponent looks at it, yeah, and they just instantly fold. They look at it and think, well, what do we do? You can't do anything. You've lost. I'm sorry. That's just the game. Torrential Tribute is so powerful. Just on summon, destroy everything which triggers all of your monster's effects, and you just get to summon more, you get to summon out your Unchained Souls, your Saramas, and uh, just for your follow-up. It's brutal, and being able to just wipe someone's field, we would've just waited until the very moment he was about to go in for a game, and just bang, gone. See you later. You're done. So powerful, I'm a massive fan, and for being a rare as well, such an old card. So satisfying to use. But yes, that's game number three against heroes, against the card that should've outed our deck. I don't know what to tell you in game number four. Already into game four, we're going first here, which is ideal. Summon out our uh, Sarama. Now, Sarama is a little bit different from the other two twins in that this card isn't a starter. That's why we don't play it at three. I think most people play it at three. I think it's a bit silly to play it at three. I never really want to see it in my opening hand. It's not the worst card to top deck into. So I think two is fine, but you never really want to see it in your opening hand. Uh, but still, it gives us a target for our escape, which means we can still pop pop. We've got the Imperm, we've got the Call, we've got the Unchained Soul. So it's not as if we have no plays, but we are going against Sword Soul. They've got the Emergence, the Ecclesia, they've got everything. We're going to call by the Grave that Ecclesia here just to stop that play outright. But we know he has the Mo Yi in the hand. 
Uh, again, that doesn't leave us without options. Like, you know, Sword Souls, if you know what to aim for, aren't that hard to stop either. They go Mo Yi, summon out a token by revealing a second emergence in their hand. We're going to negate the Mo Yi, hoping, hoping that just stops his whole turn. We know at least one card in his hand is dead, so the chances of him having a strategist in his hand is 100%. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Discard one, summon out the strategy, summon a token. Escape with the Unchained. You can't synchro someone without a token. Gone. We're gonna go caught by the Grave here, trying to stop our Sarama. Not very much we can do about that, but we can summon the Unchained Soul out to the field from our hand, because one of our cards were destroyed. So yes, Sarama does get negated, um, but you know, what are you gonna do? Such is life. Uh, the Unchained Soul gives us a free cape eater. Can't trigger its effect to pop a card. But it does, now that the turn has passed, mean that every single turn, if this card gets destroyed, we could pop one of his cards. Uh, now, we're just going to swing into the Moyi, take it out right away. We don't need to be setting anything else. Set the cross out after the battle phase, past turn. So this is where you're getting into your grind game. This is where you're going to take advantage of the recursion of your cards, which is a very, very powerful effect. So our Abominations Prison as well is going to activate, search our deck for any of our Unchained. We're going to grab Sarama. As I said, a very a very powerful top deck. We're gonna set the unchained so, uh, escape. Sorry, escape of the unchained. Our opponent goes infinite permanence. We were waiting on that imperm. We knew for a fact it was imperm, and we sort of knew that one was cross out as well. To be honest, we, I was I was doubting it was two imperms, and they don't really play any of our traps, so that's fine. Nukes our whole board. Uh, cross out is gonna stop the imperm, which is a bit pointless now. But again, he destroys our whole field. And we don't care, because we pop Unchained, because Sarama still resolves. Sarama summons a monster from the deck, and during the end phase, our Unchained Soul comes back to the field. So we summon out one soul, summon out our, one of our twins, we're going to poke him for, what was that, 2400? Uh, and then we're going to Link Summon into the Unchained Soul of Rage, and then at the end, we still get the, our Abominable Unchained Soul. So the Blackout did nothing. It just cleared up the field and we just recovered from it right away. Our opponent top decks, there's nothing they could top deck to help them because we've got the Unchained Soul to, to link summon with anything that they summon because Unchained Soul during your opponent's main phase, target a card they control, link summon using it and your opponent's monster. You normally summon out the Unchained Soul of Anguish, which can do the same thing on, on your turn. You link with one of their monsters and you summon out your Abomination and things get nuts. We never actually went into that combo during our initial win streak because everyone just lost too quickly. We were too good. You know, we were too good for the likes of Sword Souls, for the likes of Branded, for the likes of those, you know, what can you do? Anyway, let's get into the deck profile. We're going to break this down and see exactly how it worked. This deck is so much fun. Already getting into the deck profile. So this has been one of my sort of recent passion projects. I'm a massive fan of Unchained. Literally, ever since I saw this card, I started playing this in a... It was like a fur hire deck years ago. God, I can't even remember. This guy was just so cool. And that was it. That's all that inspired me. Like, this guy just being cool was enough for me. Uh, and then once I found out sort of how the archetype worked and how sort of just unique it was and how small it is as well. Honestly, it being so small means that you have an awful lot of freedom when it comes to how you construct the deck. Uh, but it's just so cool. I love this deck so much. So we're going to get in and we're going to break it down card for card. Now, first thing, hand traps. Triple maxi, triple effect veiler, double called, single cross out. Triple imperm, I guess you would still classify it as a hand trap. So we've got 12 slots in there for you to do whatever you want with in terms of hand traps. Then, of course, with your trap trick, you run free trap trick. I don't care what you're deciding to run. In terms of the extra traps you're choosing to run off a of trap trick, we've got those five triple triple torrential tribute, double dimension barrier. Uh, you will still use trap trick even if you're not playing any additional traps. You would still always play it for these cards. Uh, so still, still obviously put it in. I think you're a damn fool if you don't play torrential tribute. I'm going to count this as core. I think you're a moron if you don't play torrential tribute. This card is so powerful in this deck oh and of course the double ghost spell heaven forbid so we're playing you've got four, if you want to play a 40 card deck you've got 14 slots to play with uh, i was playing 42 so that's 18 free slots for you to do whatever you want with i'm not counting these as free slots turns of tribute's not a free slot i will fight anyone in the comments over this absolutely not torrential stays in uh but yeah unchained twins so you've got basically the main deck is split between the twins and these souls 
Uh, the twins all basically do the same thing. They all have a floating effect where if they're destroyed, you summon another unchanged monster from the deck. And each of them have a different effect on the field. So uh, a Rue basically will, when, while in your hand, you pop a card in your field to summon it to the field. So this is your special summon. And it can also, again, destroy one of your cards. Uh, these guys also have the same floating effect. I'll cover, I'll cover that now. So the two trap cards, as well as your three Unchained Twins, all have the same effect, where if they're destroyed, you summon another Unchained Monster from the deck. They all have that floating effect. So ideally, if you have the Red Twin, you want to have one of these cards in your hand, pop it, and special summon out this card to the field. Rakia uh, is similar. It doesn't get the special summon, unfortunately, but while basically face up as a quick effect, target a card in your field and destroy it. Uh, so while it does seem innately it's weaker than the red twin is on your turn but on your opponent's turn if you need to use trap trick to get access to one of your unchained trap cards uh, rakia then comes in with a lot more versatility because it can use its effect on your opponent's turn so both of them again i will play both at three i think they're both very very important both of them are equally uh, core and important to the strategy basically if you open up one of these six and then one of these six one of these nine i guess uh you're pretty much set that's your full combo uh, Sarama is uh, I, Sarama is actually more powerful than the other two, but you don't really want to see it in your opening hand, so I cut it down to two. Basically, you would target an Unchained card in your graveyard, set it, and then destroy a card in the field. Now, bear in mind, you can destroy the card that you just set. So typically, you want to be setting one of your Unchained Trap cards, and then either destroying the Trap card you just set, or destroying another one of your Unchained monsters that are on the field in order to generate more advantage. Again, key part of your uh, turn one combo is typically if you have one of these cards and one of your two, your blue or your red twin, you'll set the card, pop it with, with one of your twins, summon a Sarama, Sarama, reset the trap card, destroy the twin on the field, summon out your abominable Unchained Soul, link summoned into your un Unchained Soul of Rage. That's your turn one, plus any trap cards, hand traps, whatever it is. That It's that simple. Straightforward, like a five step plan, takes less than uh, two minutes so really straightforward then your two unchained souls uh the unchained souls are different this guy basically while in the field will allow you to link summon during your turn with one of your opponent's monsters which is pretty good uh and if it's destroyed by battle or card effect you can grab basically an unchained monster in your graveyard and special summon it so it has to be in your graveyard for this floating effect uh but it's mainly here to link someone with your opponent's cards it's a hard brick if you open it that's not fun. Uh, it is a dead card in your hand, basically. It can still be summoned, but you really don't want to be seeing it. So we can play it at two. If you if you want to play it at two, you can. I play it at one. I don't think I don't think more than one is necessary. I do play the Abominable Unchained Soul at two, though, uh, just for a bit more versatility when it comes to it. So on summon, discard a card to pop a card, non-targeting destruction. Very good, three K Peter, and basically. If a card in your field is destroyed while it's in your hand, you can summon this card from your hand. And if this card is in the graveyard after having been destroyed that turn, it will resummon itself to the field. Bear in mind, you can only special summon this card once. So you can't summon it from your hand and then during the end of that same turn, summon it again from the graveyard. Uh, so it's floating, it's recurring effect only really works if it's not destroyed on the turn it's summoned. If it's destroyed after the turn it's summoned, then yes, that, that bad boy is coming back all day, every day. Uh, but yes, it needs to happen on the following turn at least. Abomination's Prison has the same floating effect, but this is just a searching card. You would never really set and pop this. It's more it's more useful as just for its actual effect. Search for an Unchained card. No restrictions, no cost. It's cards. You can search your traps as well. Busted. Uh, Torrential Tribute. Nuke the field on summon. That's pretty core that's nuts triggers all of your effects wipes out all of your opponent's monsters zero cost perfect card searchable off of trap trick trap trick search your deck for any normal trap card as long as you have at least two copies of it in your deck banish one set the other escape of the unchained both of these cards have the floating effect i mentioned before escape of the unchained pop an unchained monster on your field and a card on your opponent's field and destroy both very easy abominable chamber of the Unchained, basically you resurrect one of your Unchained from either your graveyard or your hand. So just a free special summon. Uh, typically more useful for its set destruction effect, but you know, also does come up as you saw in the gameplay. That's the main deck, really straightforward. Pop your own cards, summon a bunch of monsters, link summon, and win the game. That's pretty much it. Uh, 
in terms of the trap card selection you can pick whatever you want i was a big fan of of course infinite permanence is searchable off of trap trick dimensional barrier i'm a big fan of i think is fantastic to be using off of trap trick really locks down the likes of branded and sword souls in particular you know you gotta play to the meta if they're the big dog decks you're gonna need to acknowledge that and play cards to counter them because you only play link monsters you have no qualms about saying yeah no fusions this turn no synchros this turn uh no pendulum this turn which doesn't you know it's sort of a rare matchup but you know it, it's it's got a lot of versatility to it i think it does counter the big dogs of the meta pretty hard and yeah 100 i'd recommend it but again ultimately choice is yours go nuts do whatever you want extra deck so in terms of core the unchained soul of rage is literally the only link monster i summoned during like my first five games uh basically during your opponent's main phase you can summon you can use this card on one of your opponent's monsters to link summon uh usually you'll be linking three into the soul of anguish it, they need to have at least an, a one unchained soul monster so you need one of these two guys in there very very easy to do don't worry about it uh like through the main combo i already described it'll work so this guy then would link up into the Unchained Soul of Anguish, which during your turn, you can target an opponent's monster and link summon using it and this card. Um, and then you'll typically link it up into the Unchained Abomination. Although there are other options, I think the only restriction is it has to be dark. Yeah, so you can summon out Access Code Talker. If you really want to summon something like, I don't know, the Borolo Dragon, Boral Sword Dragon, go nuts. You can summon the Boral Sword Dragon if you want. Uh, if you want to replace something like Apollosa, you'll never use Apollosa in this deck. Uh, yeah, so you could do something like this. Again, I never really did that play too much in my initial testing. Most people scoop before you get that far. Uh, but yes, so you can summon out something like the Unchained Abomination, which just destroys a whole bunch of cards. So if a card on the field dest destroyed by a card effect, destroy an extra card. When a monster is destroyed by battle, destroy an extra card. During the end of the turn, destroy an extra card so you can pop three monsters per turn off of this guy's effect and again you're going to be triggering these things constantly unchained abomination is bonkers if you can summon them absolutely nuts uh really really fun addition to the deck i play them at two because a lot of the times if you're using your uh un unchained twins you're getting locked into fiend monsters there aren't a lot of good fiend link monsters I'll be honest, you can maybe play the Griffin, like the, the Nightmare Griffin or something in here. There aren't a lot of good ones, so I would maximize yourself on playing some of the better ones. Uh, you don't need to play this at two, like I said, but I, I, I like it at two. In terms of our other uh, Fiend type options, we of course have Nightmare Cerberus, pop a special summon card. Phoenix, pop a back row card. And the Unicorn, spin a card back to deck. That's your backup Fiend options. In terms of some of the fun techs we're using, IP Mascarina, IP Mascarina into the Unchained Abomination is really powerful. So, so suddenly you've got this monster that's popping three cards a turn that can't be destroyed by card effects. That's pretty nuts. So IP is pretty good. Uh, Topologic Trispania, uh, not a card you'll see a lot of, but basically this is here specifically to help you out with things like the Eldritch matchup. So while he's on the field, if something is summoned to one of the zones he points to, you banish as many cards in the spell and trap card zones as possible, and your opponent takes 500 card points of damage for each of their cards that were banished. So basically, it's just a it, it's a bit of a neat way of clearing out Elf Lich. It doesn't always resolve because you know half the time they've already got Skill Drain, uh, you know they've got the uh, the Conquistador and stuff like that. So it doesn't always work out, but you know it at least puts an awful lot of pressure on your opponent to get rid of it. So that's why that's there. Again, replace that with whatever you want. I understand that's a UR. Absolutely. Don't worry about that if you don't have it. Boral Sword, which I just added. Uh, just a dark monster to be summoned. That's pretty much it. Just OTK machine. Avramax. Because I'm a fanboy, I don't know. It's just because I like him. Is that Link 4? Like I said, you don't use your extra deck an awful lot. This can be whatever you want. I, I, I'm just a fan of Avramax. And Access Code Talker, I would say is more important. Him being a dark monster and him being the absolute OTK master that he is. It helps you really push in for lethal an awful lot of times. So these guys are really good to control, you know, with, with all the trap cards and everything. But if your opponent gets a wee bit sort of overwhelming, or if your grind game isn't as strong as your opponent's, that's when your access code comes in, and that's when you decide to mop up the game. Underworld Goddess is purely here to tribute opponent's monsters that can't otherwise be destroyed or outed. 
which does happen so you know be, be aware again against any deck that plays big monsters that can't be destroyed by card effects like against the boral end dragon this deck sort of struggles a little bit it really does uh so you need to you need to be aware of that and you need to sort of bear that in mind that you you might struggle so this card is here specifically to sort of deal with situations like that but yes i've rambled on long enough definitely for sure one of my favorite decks in the metagame let me see if i can put this back together for you guys do, 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 do. where's our maximus c pretty sure this is how i had it sitting something like this uh but yes if you guys like this fantastic leave it down below see what you like about it what you don't like about it questions suggestions anything at all and subscribe if you haven't already we're getting close to a thousand that's our big big milestone so it is we need to be pushing for it uh and again like the video if you haven't already uh it's, it's something we haven't really been pushing but i mean it is surprisingly helpful so i would appreciate it if you would not mind it doesn't cost you anything why not but yes that's all i have to say on the deck so i will catch you all in the next one